Good evening. Welcome to the Wendell Elamine Jane Show. Tonight's guest we have uh, Jabara. He just came home from from prison. Uh, I want to welcome you to our show. Thank you, sir. Good having you. Matter of fact, uh, welcome home. Thank you. Appreciate you, it. You've been going a while. Yes, sir. Okay. How much? How much? How much? How much time did you do in prison? Twenty-three years. Twenty-three years. Um, I want to ask you a few questions, basic questions, because the show is a show for lifers. And I say a show for lifers is, I should say ex-lifers, because you're home now. And uh, the show is a, a show that we want to let society know who we are, you know, opposed to who we were before we went to prison. So the show is basically to give the community, give society, us who we are today. So I'm going to ask you a, 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 a ba basic questions. Uh, 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 you went to prison for, for what and what, what was your sentence? What was your, uh, your, your crime? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I was sentenced to uh, 32 years of life for a conspiracy to commit murder and three attempted murders. Um, I did 23 years off of the 32 years of life. Okay. And what, what, which county would you say you're from? I was out of San Mateo County. San Mateo County. I'm originally out of East Palo Alto. Okay, okay. And um, you went to prison uh, at what age were you when you went to prison? Uh, I was 21 when I committed the crime. Um, I think 23 or 24 when I was committed to San Quentin. Okay, okay. And going into prison, had you ever been to, been to prison before? No, sir. Because this was your first time in prison? Yes, sir. So going into prison, you had to, you kind of like had to adjust your whole life. You had to start a new lifestyle somewhat going into prison. Yes, sir. Um, I had been in the streets previously. I was out. I was selling drugs, um, mm -hmm. so I had adapted somewhat of a shell. Uh, but going to prison, uh, maximum security prison, at such a young age, it uh, it made me have to kind of detach from the world in in any sense of civility that I did have. Okay, okay. So so. Where did you, where did you start, start your time? What, what prison did you start your time? Well, uh, the reception center at that time was in um, San Quentin, mm -hmm. and um, I was uh, shipped from there to Calipatria, which is out in the desert uh, between um, down close to the Yuma, Arizona, Mexico border. That's way down there. Yes, sir. Goodness, man, you're a long, a long way from home. 120 actually. degrees every day. Is that right? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Now, we want to we wanna find out who, who you were going into prison. You know, what kind of attitude you had going into prison? How did you uh, uh, adapt to prison life? And, you know, what, what made you change to who you are today? Well, I was a, I was a bitter young man. I had lost my best friend uh, to a violent crime, and my other best friend was paralyzed. So my crime was a revenge crime, um, and I was also dealing with previous dysfunction in my own home. Um, so I was, I was upset. I felt... Uh, treated unjust, although I had committed a horrendous crime. Um, I was upset. I lost my family. I left my uh, three-year-old son and his mother out there. Um, my father was in and out of prison, so that was the last thing that I wanted to do, is to leave my own son. Mm -hmm. So I had, be I had become everything that I said I wouldn't become. Um, so I was very upset and, and, and bitter um, that I had uh, become a failure, so to speak. So, so, so going, in, going in, in the prison, at a certain time in your life, going into prison, you had to kind of like do something different. You, you made a, a change in your life, the way you, you were living, to, 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 to more or less go in front of the board of prison term to be found suitable to come home. Yeah, I had, uh, I had uh, two, two epiphanies that I remember. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember one day um, I was on the weight pile, and... Uh, it was just this big guy with the big muscles. You know, that's when we were all driving iron in, in, in prison. And I looked and I saw this big guy walking. And I thought to myself that when I was younger, I admired people like him. Mm -hmm. And now I had gotten to that place where I had become him or was working to become him. Mm -hmm. And I felt that I had been made a fool. I felt foolish. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I had really began to despise the whole culture of prison. Mm. And so in despising the culture of prison, I had to come to despise the things in myself that had grabbed on to that. Mm. And uh, another point, I was also uh, working on my case. 
and I used to go to the law library every day. And I remember it was just a voice that said to me that um, God was not going to let me out of prison being the same person that I was. Mm. And I was still that same person. It took years. You know, it's like an onion. You have to peel back layers. <coughs> and so it took years for me to begin to come up out of the anger and the resentment and things. But those two uh, instances in my life uh, were pivotal for me. Okay. They were pivotal for me. Okay. So at, at what time in your life <clears throat> did you start going to programs? You start doing something different opposed to what you did when you first came to prison? Well, around that time, I've always been a history buff. Always love history. Um, so I began to study a lot of history. I began to do a lot of reading. Um, and I began to associate with those people who had those types of books, who studied that type of material, who I could discuss those things with. So that naturally kind of took me away from the, uh, uh, the criminal element or the, the, the guys that were just kicking it, just doing time. It kind of, I gravitated towards those guys that were developing themselves, educating themselves. Mm -hmm. And so with that, it wasn't just about having a bunch of information. It was really about becoming a better person. Better person. So I would say that was about 1996, 1997. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, because a lot of, a lot of times when prison, see, people in, in society, and I, you know, I agree with, with, with some of what they're saying. We, some people go to prison, and that's where they should be, mm -hmm. you know. And people go to prison, they start driving iron, they become these monsters in prison, and that's where they should be, you know. Well, for some, some people should be in prison. But a lot of people go to prison, and they become educated. They educate themselves. They go to school to get education. And <clears throat> we do what they call the metamorphosis. We change from who we were going into prison, and we become who we are now coming out of prison. Yes, sir. So, this is what we want society to know who we are today. Yes, you know, sir. we're not the same person that went in years ago. We uh, temporarily went insane. We did whatever crime we did. We took somebody's life. We did a horrendous crime. One of the worst, it is the worst crime it is to take somebody's life. But we went temporarily insane and then we came back. But they got some people been in society all their life. They've been insane all their life. You know, and they're still here. You know, they never wake up. So we, we did the metamorphosis. We woke up. We went in, into this a society within a society itself, prison, because the prison has everything that we have out here. You know, they got the banks, they got the Safeways, they got everything that we have out here. We went into society and we did the metamorphosis and we woke up and we're back in society and this is what the show is about. We've never had a show that lifers can come on and express themselves, tell us, tell society who we are yes, sir. today and that's what we're doing today. So yeah. that's why I invited you onto the show because people need to know who you are today. Yes, sir. And you know, I appreciate that. Right, right. We need to know who you are today. So this is why, you know, you're here. We want we want you to to to, to let them know that when you came home from prison, you we, we went into transitional housing. Yes, sir. Right. You went into transitional housing. But before that you had to go in front of the Board of Prison Terms and you had to prove to the Board of Prison Terms that you're suitable. You're not the same person you were when you first came into prison. Yes, sir. And going in the front of the Board of Prison Terms, it ain't no easy task to prove to them that you're suitable. That's right. You see what I'm saying? These people gotta sign their name on a piece of paper and allow you to go back into society one more chance. Okay, one more chance at getting it right. So you did that. You know, so how many times did it you go in front of the board of prison terms before they found you suitable to come on? Uh, I actually went in front of the board twice. Okay. I went in front of the board in 2012 and then in 2014. Okay, okay. Um, going, just to touch on what you said um, about prison, uh, it is, it is uh, I refer to it as society's dump. Mm -hmm. it's, where soci it's where society dumps the people that it has determined. Uh, they don't want to be a part of the society for some extended amount of time. Mm -hmm. And one thing about the dump, though, you know that you also find jewels in the garbage. Right. You know, my grandfather was a recycler. Right. So I think um, those of us that have uh, been through that furnace, that refinement process, um, we have become jewels, mm -hmm. something, something of value. We have made our lives something of value. And so that's what I work to do. Mm -hmm. And um, going in front of the board is a, is a very tedious process, as, as you know. Um, because you're being examined thoroughly. Mm -hmm. And the best determinant of the future is the past. Right. And so they're looking at my past. Mm -hmm. They're looking at not only the crime that I committed <clears throat> to get to prison, they're looking at my criminal behavior before then. Mm -hmm. They're looking at a young guy who doesn't know how to follow instructions, mm -hmm. who doesn't obey authority. 
So when I get a write-up for hanging a towel, they're looking at that, not because I, I hung the towel, but because right. I've shown right. that I still have a disrespect and a disregard for authority. Exactly. And so I had to come to understand that those little things meant something. Mm -hmm. I had to really understand that. And that's kind of rough at first because we think that people are picking on us. Right, right, we right. think it's small stuff. But as you said, for somebody to sign their name on a piece of paper for somebody who has committed such a violent crime as I did, mm -hmm. Um, that's a big deal. Sure. That's a big deal. Sure so um, I came to respect the fact that those people were a line of defense for society. And I wouldn't want a guy like I was prior to 1992 out on the streets. So right. I had to be honest with myself right. about that. Right, right, right. So you, so you, you took a, what they call, what they call it, a reality check at yourself to determine, well, well wait a minute, wait a minute, I, something, something ain't right here. Yes, you sir. know, either I'm going to fit in into society how I should be, a law-abiding citizen, a taxpayer. Either I'm going to go back to the out in society, I'm going to fail again and come back. Yes, sir. The failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. I mean, yeah. you, you know that yearning right. to be on the other side, right. to be on the other side with your family, right. to be on the <clears> other <throat> side with the, your extended family. You know, that's, that's a burning desire that, that just drives you every day. Yes, it and is. it can drive you to the left or it can drive you to the right. right. And so those of us like yourself and myself, it drove us to the right. It, it drove us to really reevaluate ourselves, right. to clean ourselves up and make ourselves the men that we know that our family needed. Not just the men that somebody would sign off on, but that our family needed, <coughs> that society needed. Right. You understand right. what I'm saying? Right. Right. So, yes, sir. Yeah. It's a, it's a so, tedious job. So, so you know, I, 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 I say like this, the Almighty <clears throat> doesn't make mistakes. Almighty don't make mistakes. Anything that is done is done for a reason. Yes, sir. See, the, the, the table's already set. You know, in, 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 in life, the table's already set. We have to find out what our purpose is. Everybody has a purpose in life. But until you find out what your purpose in life is, you're going to keep on doing what they say, the repeat, the repeat, right. the repeat, the repeat. And I tell the youngsters today that, you know, you can do all the good things in life. You can say all the good things in life. But if you don't apply the way it should be applied, it's just good things being said yes, sir. and good things being done. Yes, sir. Right. So everybody has a purpose in life. God don't make mistakes. Everything he does, it does, he's done for a reason. And that art that, that paper is already written out. You got a chapter in your life. And on the day of judgment, you're gonna have to answer. You know, we can't get out of this alive, we gotta go back. Right? But on the day of judgment, you got to answer to everything that you've done. And he's gonna ask you, did you know? Well, yeah, I know, but but now ain't no buts to it. Did you know? Okay, yeah, I knew. Okay, well, you you got to pay the piper then. Yes, sir. So so what we have to do now is that we back in society. You came back to society. You was found suitable for parole. You came home. They allowed you another shot at society. So you was allowed to come home. Now you have opportunity to get it right the way it should be. Yes, sir. Right. You got family. Family love you. You know, you got a purpose in life. So let society know what you're doing now. You come out to Health Right 360. Yes, sir. You're in a program. Tell us about the program. Yes, sir. Um, Health Right 360 for me at this point in time <clears throat> is somewhat an extension of, of, of what I was doing in prison. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the first 90 days is uh, based on treatment. It's based on doing the classes and the courses of, of, of uh, anger management and different types of classes that uh, – I may need. Um, the next 90 days is about reentry. Um, my life's crime happens to be my life's work. And one of the things that I found um, for me is that I didn't have any skills at resolving conflict. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any skills at peacemaking. And so one of the things that I want to do, uh, as I was sharing with you earlier, is I'm going back to school to uh, get my BA, and I'd like to uh, attend a master's program um, on conflict resolution and peacemaking because I believe that uh, the youth need an avenue mm -hmm. where they can mediate issues that may come up. And I want to deal with the youth, uh, Elamine, before they get to the older age. I want to deal with them younger because conflict resolution skills are skills that we should learn in our youth. Exactly. exactly. However, once we get older and we don't have those skills, then we resort to fighting, we resort to guns, we resort to all kind of violence and different things of that nature. And so one, that's one of the things that I want to do is I want to work with the youth in teaching conflict resolution skills and giving them a safe place to come 
and deal with their issues before they get to the violent crime and things of that nature. That's, that's beautiful, man. That really is. That really is. We see we we got people that go into the system, and I've I, I've known quite a few people that come home from prison after doing a long period of time, and they get out and say I'm I'm done, man. So with right. It's about right. me now. Right. You know. And I mean, you know, you know that you know when to, when to hear that, you know, after you go into the system, and become conscious. To hear that, that's really sad. Yes, sir. You see, because when you come home, you see your loved ones, your family. Yeah. You know, you see your nieces, your nephews, and they caught up. Yeah. You see, and if you don't save yours, you can't save nobody else. You yes, got to start with your own first. Yes, sir. I would I would like to say about that that for me, um, going to prison was not me paying a debt to, to society. Mm -hmm. That was getting a dangerous person off the street. Exactly. When you look at how much money is paid to house me in prison from 1992 to 2015. I don't know how much it is per year, but I know that's a, a few Harvard educations, exactly. a few Stanford educations, yes, a right. few Yale educations, more yes, than right. enough. Right. So I've actually continued to suck from society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So my debt has actually not been paid. Right. My debt is paid because I, uh, my debt is paid when I began to give back from my experience to exactly. society. Exactly. And I recognize this about some people that don't want to do that. Some people don't have it in them. Mm -hmm. And so for some people to go back and try to help others would take them down. Exactly. So I understand that frustration because I've experienced it. And I couldn't wonder, man, how you do all this time and you don't want to help? Mm -hmm. But it's not for them to do. Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? It's for them to stay out of trouble. Exactly. Don't hurt nobody. Exactly. Don't hurt you understand nobody. what I'm saying? Right. For those of us that have it in us, that's what we, we have to share. That's just a, a blessing, you right, know. Right, so right. I understand your, your, your sentiment on right, that. Right, right. You know, well, you know, and I, like I say, everything happens for a reason. I believe that everything in creation happens for a reason. Yes, sir. You know, us being taken from this madness and put inside that cesspool, and I call it a cesspool literally because it's a, it's a place where all garbage is. Yes, sir. You know, it, it goes around the circles and it kicks out the bad and it keeps, it, it, it kicks out the good, excuse me kicks out the good and keeps the bad, you know. So what we have to do is, is we got to be aware, you know, what happens to us in prison. You know, like you said, you went to prison and you realized that, hey, I ain't supposed to be part of this. This ain't something where I'm supposed to be, you know. My creator didn't create me to be in here for the rest of my life. My creator didn't put me in here for me to be part of this madness. He put me in to shake me, give me that little juke. That's right. And wake me up. Yes, so, wait, 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 you got something to do in life. You know, and a lot of people don't realize that, that they go into this cesspool and they get shook, they get shook, and they get shook. We might go and do a shoe turn. Yeah. We might do two or three shoe turns. Yeah. And we might come out and finally get that little shake and say, wait a minute, man, what am I doing? I'm burning rough. I'm going nowhere. Right, right. You know, I'm wound up in somewhere where I ain't supposed to be. Right. You see, and that's a form of, of, of trying to fit in somewhere where you don't fit in. Yes, sir. You see? Um, I liken that, our situation to the story of Jonah, yeah, exactly right, exactly. who didn't uh, want to follow his passion, mm -hmm. didn't want to follow the directions of his father and mother, mm -hmm. and um, ended up in a situation um, where he was swallowed up. Exactly. And so we were swallowed up for a time, mm -hmm. and we were shaken up, and we prayed, and we worked, and we struggled. And, 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 and from the mercy of the Creator, he spit us back out onto back land out. to right. do that job. Exactly. We still have a job to do. <coughs> we, we have a job to do. We have something that's that's, that's, that's that's put in us from birth, right? Like I say, everybody has a purpose. Yes, sir. You see, and if you don't find out what your purpose is, you'll fall low bottom, and you go out worthless, useless, you know, a life that's been in vain. Yeah. You see, so when we find out what our purpose is in life, we have to go for it. We got to, got to make that happen. Me, I went in prison. I did 27 years and nine months mm -hmm. for a crime I didn't even commit. Yes, sir. Right, but that's besides the point. When I was in prison, I did the metamorphosis. I did the complete change from who I was when I went to prison to who I am now. So now I know what my purpose is in life. Yes, sir. You know, I know I got to be the service for the rest of my life. Yes, sir. Because all the wrong that I did before I went to prison, oh my goodness, you right. know what I mean. Right. I, I right. realize now that it's a reason for me being here. So now we got to come out, we got to help those that are suffering from a disease that they don't believe they have, and we know they have it. We know they're sick, and they don't believe they're sick, so we got to show them that you're sick, how you got sick, how to get well, and how to stay well. Yes, so sir. that's what we got to do today. Yes, sir. And blessed is the man that finds his purpose in life. Exactly. I heard a wise man say that 
your gift is usually what you do best mm -hmm. and you love. And when you cultivate that, then you have choices in life. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Other than that, it's like you're like a, a leaf in the wind. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going from this job to that job or that that thing to that thing. You, you understand what I'm saying? And you're trying to find yourself. And many people spend a lifetime doing right. that. Exactly. So it's a blessing for those of us who are able to. And you had to go through a purification process exactly. to do that. You had to go within. Right. And I want to say that many people don't have the time that we have, mm -hmm. the luxury that we have, mm -hmm. to begin to order our thoughts, to get our thinking together, mm -hmm. to look at what really matters in life. Right. Because we know out here, only thing that matters is going to work and paying bills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you get with your family on the holidays. So we began to see family in a, in a far bigger way. Right. We began to see work in a far bigger way. As I said, my life's crime is my life's work. Mm -hmm. That's not work for me. That's not work. That's something I enjoy doing. Exactly. I enjoy working with younger younger children mm -hmm. and helping them not make the mistakes that I, I made. And, I, and the thing is that we just have to show them what health looks like. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't have to tell them they sick. I knew when I was sick. Exactly. I just need to see what health looked like. You just need to see. Just show me, see. show me what health looked like and how right, you got right. there. And we I, just have to be examples. Right. I call it sometimes we we we're in a we we living in this world. I was telling somebody the other day that they, they had a movie come out years ago in the seventies. It was Superfly. Yes, sir. Superfly ruined a whole generation of people. Yes, sir. Right. Because we looked at Superfly and we said, "Man, my goodness, like that." And it ruined us, man. It, 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 you know, people went out and bought Cadillacs. They got dope and they got women and they went crazy. Mm -hmm. And it was a fictional story. Right. But they lived that dream and they're still living that dream to this day. Right. But it's a fictional story. But what got to be done now is they got to, 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 to come to reality that we're in this life that we're in today, right? And the, the world goes on. At one time in life, they said the world was flat. Mm -hmm. But it's round. You can start at one part of the world, you can go around the whole world and come back to the same part that you started from, mm -hmm. right? So we can do anything in this world that we want to do, in this country that we want to do, mm -hmm. without harming anybody, you know, being happy, make the world a better place for everybody involved, yes, sir. And, and it'll be a much better place. So we went into that system, that whirlpool, that cesspool, and we got shook up, we got spit out, now you're in the Walling House, you're making progress, you're moving forward, you're about to go to school, you get finna get education, finna complete your education education, what is your future goal? Well, let me say this. I'll never be com complete with my education. One thing I vowed is to stay in education, okay. continue developing myself, continue studying, whether it's dancing, whether it's uh cooking or whatever, because uh I think that's where I made a big mistake in my life. I left school. I left school at an early age. Okay. And so <clears throat> leaving school it cut my development off, mm -hmm. and that cut off my access to the world. Mm -hmm. You talk about S Superfly, uh, Scarface mm -hmm. was the, the 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 movie of our generation, right. crack cocaine mm -hmm. and so forth. And his motto or the motto of Scarface was "The world is yours," mm -hmm. right? And you just said it. We can do anything in this world, <coughs> specifically in this country, without hurting other people. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I buy into that. I buy into that, and uh, so I'm just going to continue to pursue my education and uh, really just enjoy life, enjoy my family. Enjoy it's it's going to continue to be a growing process with connecting with uh, family members that weren't even born when I, when I was mm -hmm. gone. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and being an example, right. and being an example, showing that the world is theirs That's right. if they go about it the if right way. If they go way. about it the right way. Yes, sir. If they go about it the right way. Because, like I say, I say again, in this in this world, in this time, you can do anything you want to do. Yes, sir. If you can, if you can dream it, you can make it reality. Yeah. You know, if you can, if you can, if you if you see something, you can make it happen. Yes, sir. You know, I mean, dreams are are, are, are dreams to become true. Yes, sir. You know, so anything that you can you can you can dream on, you can you can think about it, you can make it happen. Yes, sir. You know, we got a black president. That's right. Ain't never happened before. It probably won't never happen again, but we got one. So you can show that there. Yes, you can do anything you want to do in this world, in this country. Yes, sir. You know, so, you know, today we're going to really give you a, a, a kuju, a shout out for you being home. You made it back, brother. You know, we're glad to have you. Thank you. you know glad I mean? to you be got, back. You got something to do in this world. You got something to say. You got, you got a difference to make. Yes, sir. And you're going to make a difference. Yes, sir. Because you come home with the mindset that you left, you know, with that attitude with that bad thing about you. you come home 
and you did the metamorphosis, and this is who you are today. Yes, so, sir. world, look out. Here's who, are, who, we are, who we are. We're not that, that monster. We're not that person who you say that we are. Some of us went to prison. Some of us need to be in prison. But we have an opportunity to come back out in society. The Board of Prison Turn found us suitable for parole. So we have opportunity to come back, and we have opportunity to do it right this time. We got a brand new chapter in this life. So your future goal is to be what, my brother? My future goal is to be the best example of manhood that I can be, to continue to be a student of life. Uh, it doesn't consist of, of an amount of money. It doesn't consist of an occupation. It consists on being the best man that I can be for my son, for my family, and for my society. And so um, I'm going to be working with the youth. I'm going to be working with younger guys, and uh, I'm going to deal with that conflict resolution. I want to open up some centers, mm -hmm. you know, for uh, the youth to come to. Um, but I just want to be that example first and foremost. That's right. I have to be the example first and foremost right. of what I'm talking about. Because right. if I'm not the example of what I'm talking about, then what I'm saying goes for nothing. Goes for nothing. Yes, sir. Absolutely nothing. So, so with that, we want to we want to thank uh, 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 the bar for being on the show today, this evening. Uh, this show comes on every night at seven, every Saturday night at seven o'clock. If you can't see it on Saturday night, you can see it at one o'clock on Saturday, on Monday morning at, uh, at 1 o'clock. Uh, so tune in to the Wendell Elamine James show. We want to thank the brother again for, for being on the show today. Yes, and, 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 and in months, we're going we gonna to bring you back. See, because people in society, they need to know that, you know, uh, you are doing something different with your life. You're making a contribute. You're contributing to society. You're making a difference. Uh, the person that went in those years ago, he don't exist no more. You left him in there. Yes, sir. So he's still hollering about trying to come out. Yes, sir. But he didn't want to come out when you came out. Yes, sir. You know, you left him in there. So sometimes you're gonna be sitting on your bed at night time, you're gonna hear him hollering. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> it's too late, finally. You didn't want to come out. That's right. You know, so uh, you know, may uh, uh the creator bless you, yes, sir. keep you safe, you and your family, reunite you with this with, with your family and the world and, and and do the best you can, my brother. You yes, know sir. what I mean? And no is not an option. Yes, sir. Try is not an option. We're going to make this happen. Yes, sir. We come from the make it happen try. That's right. Yes, sir. And thank you, my brother. Yes, sir. And uh, like I can say tune in at 7 o'clock on Saturday nights, 1 o'clock on Mondays, and uh, have a good weekend. We'll see you next Saturday.